So what are scenes in Ecamm? How do you use them? And how can you get most out of them? Well, in this lesson, we're going to be making scenes easy. Here's everything that you need to know about scenes in Ecamm. So to create scenes in Ecamm, you're going to need the scenes panel, the scenes window. And that's over here. Now, if you can't see the scenes panel, I'll just close it down so you can see how to open it. If you come over here to window and then you come down to scenes and select that, there's your scenes panel. This is where we're going to be working with scenes in Ecamm. The easiest way to think about scenes in Ecamm so you can grasp the concept. Think of them like just like PowerPoint slides. A PowerPoint slide, it can hold lots of different types of media, images, video, text, even audio. And Ecamm scenes are exactly the same. It's a canvas on which you can place video, text, images, PDF documents and such. You can do so much with scenes. You can have multiple scenes. In effect, you can, just like when you're using PowerPoint, you can build out your entire presentation ahead of time and then just present it. Scenes, they help you plan out your presentation. Scenes, they're like a storyboard. But before we get into creating scenes, let me just mention something here. I've created a free ebook, a guide, a guide on how to get started creating great looking video. And it's really detailed. It tells you everything that you need to know to create professional looking video. And I'll put a link below if you want to check it out. Anyways, Let's jump over to Ecamm and start creating a few different kinds of scenes. So here we are in Ecamm, ready to create our scenes. So over in uh, the scenes, the scenes panel, the first thing I'm going to do before we start creating any scenes, I'm going to create a new group or a folder. And I'll tell you why in a minute. I'm going to call this presentations, press enter. I'm going to drag it above the default scene and then I'm going to drag the default scene into the presentations folder. And I'll just name default scene. We'll call this on camera. Now, the reason why I've created a folder is, well, one, it keeps it more organized, but two, and more importantly, when you create your presentations and you create your scenes, you could have 20, 30, 50, even 100 scenes, all with video, PDF, text, images, all kinds of things. You're going to put a lot of work into creating your presentations. And if something should go wrong and Ecamm became corrupt or the file became corrupted, you're going to lose all your work. By putting it in one nice neat folder, when you finish building out your presentation, you can just select presentations, come down to the little export icon, and you can export it to your desktop or even better to say Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever. Anyway, let's start creating some presentations. Let's say, let's say we're creating a presentation and we want to start with an intro movie. We want the intro movie to start playing and maybe it's got a countdown timer. And when it counts down to zero, we want to come on camera. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a new scene. So we'll call this intro. And then we want the intro video with countdown timer. So I'll navigate to the folder and I'm going to drag that into the working space. And then we'll just click pause while we work on it. Now, in Ecamm, in scenes, the thing you've got to remember is scenes play from the top down. So we want the intro to be the first scene. So I'm going to click on it and drag it up above the on camera scene. So it's going to play intro. Then it's going to, we're going to appear on camera. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here and we need to have it so that when it counts down to nothing, when the video stops, it jumps to the next scene. So the options we've got, we could do nothing. We could loop the video. Or this is what we want. We could click go to next scene. So we'll click go to next scene. And then we'll just test that work. So I'll set it there so we don't have to wait so long. We'll play it. It counts down. And there we go. We're on screen. That works. In fact, just let me go back to that because I've just noticed. Turn it off. We want the picture in picture. We certainly don't want the picture in picture on the intro. So we'll just delete that. Come back to us on camera. So let's create a, another scene. And this time, let's say we wanted to bring in a pre-recorded video. Maybe it's a testimony or maybe it's a video of something that you want to narrate. You maybe so you want to you want to point some certain things out. So we'll call this pre re recorded enter and I'm going to select this video. We'll drag this video in. Chances are. No. Did you notice when I dragged that video in, it started playing the audio? We've got audio with the video. 
Now, if you want audio with your video, great, you don't have to do anything, but let's say you didn't want audio. Well, if you come down here, wonder where it says movie, you can click mute. And now when this video plays, it will play without, it will play without audio. So you could be alongside here in your picture in picture. In fact, we'll just make that bigger. I'll just right click and click square. I think that looks better. And so I could position that. I'll position it over here like that. So as the video is playing, you could be narrating. You could be explaining what's in the video if you wanted to. Now, there is another way that you can bring in video. And I'll just show you that. I'll just click create new scene and we'll call this temp because we're going to delete this. We don't want two pre-recorded videos, but I just wanted to show you another way. And this is using overlays. Now, I don't want to turn this into a lesson on overlays. It's about scenes, but since scenes and overlays, they, they're, so, they're so related. I'm going to give you at least a little bit of an insight. So this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to come down to the animated overlay. I'm going to select that. I'm going to navigate to a video. And let's say we'll select this one and we'll select open. Now we get an option. We could add an animated overlay or we could play full screen with audio. Well, if you remember, the last one was play full screen with audio. So we want add animated overlay. I'll just stop that from playing. Now we've got this box and we can we can move this around. We can position it anywhere on the screen that we like. We could resize it. And something else we could do, let's say we just wanted to focus on this area here where he's where he's turning the wood. I'll just make it a little bit bigger. If we come to the edges and I hold down the option key or the alt key and then I drag from the edge, I can actually crop the video. So I'm just going to crop in like that. I'll crop the top down a little bit and the bottom like that. So I could place that here. So as that video is playing, I could be explaining about wood turning or whatever it is that he's doing. Now, we've actually got some different options here. If I hit that button, we've got autoplay, do nothing, hide temporary or hide stay hidden. So High temporary, it will play till the end and then it will stop, but it will still leave the uh, video container with the with the play button. Hide, hide, stay in. And of course, the video will just disappear. So anyway, we'll just come over here. We'll just delete that. Now to delete a scene, we just highlight it and then click the little bin there. So we'll do that. OK, let's say next we wanted to add a a scene with a PDF. Let's say we wanted a PDF document and you wanted to be alongside the PDF document talking about the PDF document. I'll just stop that video from playing. It's really annoying me. So we'll create a new scene and we'll call this PDF. Press enter. I'm going to drag in a PDF like that. But notice the PDF comes in full screen. Great if you want it full screen and you could navigate through the PDF using these little arrows here. Or if you want it, you, and this is how I do it, you could use the arrows on your keyboard and go backwards and forwards. Great if you want the PDF full size. But like I said, we wanted to present alongside it. So I'll just move it out of the way a little bit. I'm just going to come to the site and I'm going to resize it. And we'll just position it there. I need to make it a little smaller, move it up. A little smaller, do you think? About there. Now, great, we've got the PDF on, on, on screen. I can navigate through using the buttons, using the, the keyboard. Fantastic, but I'm kind of half cut off now. I could sit over here, but I frankly, I find it a little bit uncomfortable. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come down here again to the overlays panel, and this time I'm going to select camera overlay. No. If I just resize like that, we're pretty much back into the situation we was in before where I'm, I'm, things are being covered up. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to position that there. Now, if we come down here to the overlays panel, notice there's an, there's an order. The cam link 4K, that's the feed from your camera. That's what this is here. And underneath, that's the PDF. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag this underneath like that. And now I can come over here and I can resize and I can move it. I just need to resize it a little bit bigger like that. 
and I can put that alongside the PDF, just move it down a little bit. And there we are. I'm on camera talking to the audience while I've got the PDF on, on, on screen. I can scroll through it using the keys. Now, something I want to, something I just want to point out, because this gets a lot of people. If you move the mouse off the PDF, notice what happens here. This disappears. Now, that means I can press the keys all I like on the keyboard, but it ain't going to work. So what you've got to do, if you want to use the keys on your keyboard, or you want to use these little buttons down here, doesn't matter. You've got to have your mouse over the PDF for you to be able to navigate through it. Anyway, okay, so that's our PDF overlay, our, sorry, our PDF um, scene. Let's create a, another scene. And this time, let's add an image. So we'll call this, if I can spell, image, press enter. We want an image. I'm gonna select this image, drop it into the workspace. Now, again, we've got the image and it's full screen. But let's say, Let's say we only wanted this top section here. Let's say we didn't want to see all the image. Again, I can come to the top, hold down the Alt key, the Option key, drag that, move up, move down to the bottom, select, drag that like that. I can now drag that down to the bottom of the screen. I'm just going to resize it a little bit, scrolling down on the, the wheel on the mouse like that and position that there. So let's add another scene. And this time we'll add a text scene. So I'm going to select this. We'll call this text. Text, not test, Andrew. <laughs> Done it again. Text, come on, Andrew. Text, <laughs> OK. So I'm going to go back down again to the overlays. And then we're going to select for a text overlay. And we'll type in some text. We'll put download the work sheet press enter there we go there's our text i'm going to make it a little bit bigger by dragging from the corner there we go and now if i want to if i want to go back and edit that text i just double click it it brings me back into the edit text overlay panel and from here i can i could select a different font size a different font family i could change the color i can add a background but up here under style where it says fixed position we could have it fly in from the left so we'll just try that. We'll click save. And then if I go to the video, the scene above it, should I say, and then come into this scene, the text flies in from the left. We'll double click it. This time we'll try scrolling ticker. So there we go. And we've got a scrolling ticker and I can speed it up by moving more towards the rabbit like that. Or we can slow it down by going towards the toy toys. I think like that that'll do okay so lastly let's create another scene and this time we'll share the, we'll share it the, our desktop so we'll call this desktop press enter now if i come over here to the scene and i select share screen now we've got options just let me open up a document so i can demonstrate okay there we go so we could have entire entire scene which will show our entire desktop, or should I say entire screen, is that will show our entire desktop. Or I could select a certain application. I'll click text edit. And then from here, I can zoom in if I like. Zoom in further, like that. I can reposition it by moving this if I wanted to, like that. And that'll make it, I'll make that a little bit bigger. Let's just reposition that like that. There we go. So there we go. We've got our scenes. Now, if I want to navigate between these scenes, there's a few ways that I could do it. I could select each individual icon just by clicking on the little icon. Or here's the other option. I could hold down the command key and then use the arrows on the keyboard. or I could hold down the command key and I could hit the number on the keyboard. I say three, say I wanted to go to the last one. That was seven. I could go to number six. So there's a few ways 
that I can navigate between the scenes. Now, when you're finished, when you're finished building out your um, building out your presentations, like I say, select the presentations folder or whatever you've called it, and then export it. So there you go. That's how easy it is to create scenes and work with scenes in Ecamm. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been helpful to you. So until next time, bye for now.